I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma when I was 30 years old. My doctor talked to me about being involved in the clinical trial and I immediately said yes because it felt like something useful that I could do whilst I was going through this difficult experience. The only way we're going to make progress is to do clinical trials. We, we just can't move forward without testing these new approaches and new drugs. I think patients do get a, a good package, if I can put it like that, on, on clinical trials. And th that is the feedback we get from some patients, that being on a trial makes them feel a bit more secure almost because they're seeing doctors, nurses, other medical professionals or nursing professionals on a more regular basis. Don't just look at it as being very siloed and, and it's my treatment plan because it, it is part of a bigger picture. It, it's, it's there to facilitate the journey of others. Your legacy is about trying to help others and, and also trying to about pave the way and get all that statistical data to see whether or not that medication can become a mainstream treatment plan. It was nice to think that this illness wasn't just happening to me. It, it's happened to lots of people before me and unfortunately it will happen to a lot of people after me. And it's bigger than me and my experience. And for me it was nice to connect with all those people by being part of this trial and potentially helping people in the future. We're kind of getting a lot of feedback from patients about what they want to see in clinical trials and what they would like us to answer and it really helps us um, define our research questions sometimes. It's really helpful to get the patient's engagement and their involvement of what they would like us to, to find out about. People who are interested in research are interested in the disease and uh, although it might sound a bit macabre saying that you're interested in the disease, actually if I was a patient I would really want my doctor to be interested in what they're treating because they're going to be engaged with the literature, they're going to know what's new, what's working, what isn't working, what's available around the country which may, we may not have available locally. So actually I think an engagement in research is good generally for a clinician's development. I love the fact that no day is the same. I really like seeing patients that have taken part in trials and have gone away and then come back several years later to take part in another trial. Sometimes the trials that they come back to take part in have been informed by the earlier trials that they've done and it's almost like they have created their own future in a way and I think that's really exciting. Here in Oxford we do a variety of clinical trials across all the different types of haematological disorders and we have trials all the way from phase one which means first in man so that's the first time they've been given to human beings before uh, all the way up to phase three trials which are much larger trials. Most of the trials we're involved with are looking at new forms of treatment so there are a lot of trials where we're using uh, antibodies to manipulate the immune system in various ways. It's not just always looking at the chemotherapy itself or the other drug treatments themselves, but it's also looking at the supportive care we can offer. And some trials we do also look at the different scanning techniques we use and how we can integrate them better. One of the really exciting things about the trials we're running is that a lot of them have what's called translational research incorporated, which basically is looking at ways to identify patients who are going to benefit from the drugs that we're giving them or combinations that we're giving them but also looking at the biology of the tumour cells themselves and how they respond to the different treatments we're giving. And the benefit of that is that means um, we are gaining lots and lots of information as we go, not just about how effective a treatment is, but about the disease itself, so that will inform other research going forward. We work very closely with the scientists who've often developed the drugs, right, from identifying the target or the novel combination all the way through to you know, keeping them updated on how patients are going. This is kind of the future, I think, working alongside, you know, scientists and clinicians working together and sort of making that gap sort of vanishingly small to non-existent so that patients get this sort of seamless transition of discovery to clinic very quickly. Haematology research, particularly lymphoma and CLL research, are fascinating areas. They are areas that are rapidly evolving all the time. And I think we're really in an era of transformational change. We're very fortunate here to have an outstanding internationally renowned university on site um, and collaborations can be formed with uh, individuals from the university. So it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity to design and run clinical trials with that in mind. But also secondarily, we have a fantastic dynamic early phase clinical trial unit here and we have the setup and the infrastructure and the experience here to be able to deliver clinical trials in that setting. 
we're all learning together because most of the drugs that we have are fairly new, it's often the first time we're sort of using them in patients. And so really it is that journey that we take all together towards fighting cancer and hopefully curing cancer. The team there at Oxford are amazing at listening to you and really, really taking on board um, what you're saying. I feel like they have a lot of respect for their patients as well. Haematologists are great. They're just, <laughs> I always describe them as the right level of caring and geeky because <laughs> they're really, really into um, their specialism, but they're also a really caring bunch of people. So more and more we're being encouraged quite rightly now to involve patients at an early level uh, in research projects. And there's a number of reasons for that. The main one, of course, being that we're trying to benefit patients. And whereas I hope as clinicians we have a reasonable idea of how we can benefit patients with lymphoma, I'm not a patient with lymphoma and there may be factors I'm ignoring, but it's actually to tell us as a clinical community what are our priorities. As a specialist in lymphoma, I, I usually see patients with a diagnosis already. And actually patients are often very, very keen to see research that shortens that diagnostic period that enables us to diagnose people more quickly, more efficiently, and then to start the appropriate treatment. And you know, to have the patient voice in that prioritisation area I think is very important and we should be humble enough as clinicians I think to realise that we don't always know what's best for the patients and what they want to see. The staff in the early phase clinical trial uh, centre at um, the Churchill have been fantastic and are fantastic and they, and they work with you every step of the way so they basically hold your hand through that process which um, is what's needed at the time. And you get to say, see the same consultant, you get to see the same uh, nurses, nursing staff, and you start to build up a fantastic relationship with these people. These people are looking after you. These people are wanting the best for you. It really is about a team. And I think it goes from the people across the lab to the people in between who are developing the drugs to us, you know, all the way from the cleaner to the catering staff, to the nursing staff, to the doctors, to the scientists, to the data people. It's really a fabulous team environment to be a part of and more so than anything else because you're constantly communicating with people, you're constantly working out how to make things better for your patient. And that's a great thing, it's a team that really surrounds the patient who is at the centre of it. We can't reassure patients that it's definitely in their interest to enter a trial, but we can reassure them that it's safe and that they're helping us. So even a negative trial, which has a, an outcome that isn't as good as we'd hoped, that's really helpful. And it means that we won't be taking that trial forward, exposing patients to unnecessary toxicities and paying unnecessarily for a treatment that, that doesn't work. So, you know, we're, we're eternally grateful to our patients. We can't do this without them. And often the motivation that patients have is quite altruistic, just wanting to help, and that's, that's wonderful. If I wasn't under the treatment at, at Oxford, that I don't think I would have been able to have access to the clinical trials that I have been on. And, and fortuitously, one's worked, and, and we're on the way now to, I've got the best remission I've had in eight years. Um, and it's all down to that clinical trial. It's all down to uh, trusting in my consultants and trusting in, in, in the process and trusting in the system. I would definitely encourage somebody to be part of a clinical trial. Um, but obviously, it's entirely up to you. <laughs>